Okay, um, multiplication is very different than addition and subtraction. And multiplication can uh, be very confusing, especially at first. It is a pattern, okay? Now the pattern is not like a normal pattern, okay? Because we're like, well, these don't even match up. Well, they're not going to match up when you can multiply them. This is a two by two matrix, right? This is a two by three matrix. The only requirement for being able to multiply two matrices together is that this number has to match that number. Okay, your two center terms. So in other words, your columns have to match the rows here. If I turned around and flipped these two, I couldn't do this because then I would have a two by three times a two by two. Do the two center terms match up? So then I know that that can't be done. So it's always, the, it's always the column of the first one and the row of the second one? Correct. Correct. Okay. And I can't just go, oh, I'm just going to turn them around, you know. So if they give it to me that these two have to be multiplied like this, then that means in that order. You can't just go, oh, i got to flip them. Okay. Um, that's going to come back later where when we go to do a problem, we have to write it the right order to be able to do it. Um, what I know is that my resulting matrix is going to be a 2 by 3. Okay? So these two have to match, and then the resulting matrix is the first and the last number. So when I finish, I'm going to get a 2 by 3. Two rows and three columns. All right, now, you're about to have, you're about to get confused, okay? So just bear with me just for a minute, because the first time you see it, it's going to be confusing. But after that, I think you're going to get the pattern, okay? You are going to do row by column. That's the order that you're going to do it in. So I'm going to write it out over here, and we're going to see if we can't figure this out. I probably didn't allow myself enough space. I'm going to go 2 by 3 plus negative 1 times 5. The answer to that is what's going to go in the first spot. Okay, so this times this plus this times this. So row, column. Then I'm going to go over to the next column and I'm going to go 2, uh, you know what, let's do it down here. So next one, I've got 2 times negative 9 plus negative 1 times 7. Now normally, you probably wouldn't write it all out because you would just go, oh, 2 times 3 is 6, negative 1 times 5, so I'm going to have a 6 plus a negative 5. Okay, that's probably what you would write. So well, the next one will do like that. I'm trying to show you in detail what I'm doing. Then I do this row in this column. So I have 2 times 2 plus negative 1 times negative 6. Okay? Then I go to the next row and I do the exact same thing with the next row. I do this row and this column. So 3 times 3 and plus 4 times 5. And I go 3 times 9, negative 9, plus 4 times 7. Then I go this row and this column, 3 times 6, or 3 times 2, sorry, plus 4 times negative 6. All right, you see what I've done, okay? Row, column, row, column, row, column. Then I go to the next row. Row, column, row, column, row, column. So, that being the case, since I ran out of room here, we're going to come over here and give my answer. So, I have a 6 plus a negative 5. What is that? 1. Positive 1. So, that goes in that first spot. Then I have a negative 18 plus a negative 7. What is that? Negative 25. Negative 25. That goes in my second spot. Okay, I have a 4 plus a positive 6. What is that? 
10. No. Normally, normally that's 10. Okay, so I have a 9 plus a 20. So 29 is going to go right here. I have a negative 27 plus a 28. What is that? One. Positive 1. I have a 6 plus a negative 24. Negative 18. Negative, should be negative 18, right? Mm. Okay. There's my answer. Now, what did I say? I said it was going to be a 2 by 3. Mm. 2 by 3. Okay? Now, you can imagine, this is just, these are small matrices. If you got a big matrix that was like a 4 by 6, this gets complicated in a hurry. What do you use this for? This is probably more in the area of uh, transformations on coordinate planes. You can do that. Um, you will use some of it. You're not going to use matrix a lot in life. I mean, I'll just be mm -hmm. honest with you. You really don't. Um, matrix, a lot of times, are, are skipped in books. Okay, They're like toward the end. And, but there is practicality. Um, we're going to, and I'm going to show you a practice. I get so excited when I get to show it to you. Um, you know how we had the problems that had the X, Y, and Z in them? And we had the whole long page where we saw, we did elimination, and we eliminated it down to two equations and put those two equations. We're going to use matrices to solve this. And in about 30 seconds on your calculator, you can solve one of these problems. Is Kramer's rule considered like a matrix? It is. Kramer's rule is, is using a determinant with a matrix, mm -hmm. which we're going to go on and talk about that. I'm not really sure why they taught you that before they taught you the matrix, but that's just the way that they ordered it. But yes, definitely, definitely. Okay. So let's why is, it, is there a specific reason why it's multiplied that way? Or is it just um, you know, I always question, you know, why is any math done the way that it's done? Because somewhere along the line, people figured out and set down a rule that said that that was done that way. Um, I always get so blown away in geometry when you have these theorems and you realize, just like the law of gravity came to be by somebody watching, you know, every time you drop mm -hmm. something, it falls to the ground. And people can argue and go, you know, it's really not a law because you haven't dropped everything. So maybe there's an exception somewhere. And so they go, that's really a theorem, that's really not a law. Well, when you get into geometry, you realize that people have observed like that. And so th they sat down and they realized, you know, every triangle that I measure, if I add all the angles together, I get 180 degrees. And you go, who, who did that? You know, somebody along the way did that. So somebody along the way figured out this is how you can multiply a matrix, and this is the way it works. Um, I don't know, have you guys... I, are y'all fans of the movie The Matrix? I've seen it. Okay, you tell me then, Joseph. How does that apply? Why is it called The Matrix when you think about these as being... Uh, code way out that way, like the ones and zeros. Maybe. Um, May, well, and we actually are going to get to like what's called Identity Matrix, which is totally made up of ones, ones and zeros. Mm -hmm. So maybe that is it. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a big fan. My They're husband all inside is. the computer. Right. Okay. And that would make sense. So, um, all right. We're going to do another one of these. Um, you ready to try one or we need to do another one? Okay. You're not going to use your calculator to multiply them. You're going to do it by hand. Okay. Because like I said, you might hit a calculus class one day or advanced math. Advanced math, you might have this in it as well. And they might say you can't use a calculator. So you have to know how to do this by hand. Um, let, let's give it a shot, okay? Let, and we'll do kind of a small one again. I always like when they're just like one digit numbers because when it gets a little bit bigger, and it's a little harder to do my hand. This, you can do a lot of it in your head on this one. Uh, first, make sure that you can multiply it. Um, if you can't multiply it the way that it's written, you just write not possible.
column and rows so we multiply into two right. two rows by the two columns? You could, well, no, because every row goes by every column. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at first it's this row and this column. So it's this times this plus this times this. Okay. Then you're going to go and you're going to hit the next column and you're going to do the same thing. So you, every single cell that you have, you're going to have two multiplication problems and one addition problem. Okay, yeah. now typically, Joseph, the way that I do it is in my head, I do the multiplication. So I go 3 times 5, oh, that's 15. And then I'll write plus 2 times 5, that's 10. So I never write out my multiplication. I just write out the answers to my multiplication problems and then put my plus between them. Okay, and that helps me keep it organized. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, do everybody get it? Okay. Yes, no, Joseph? Not sure yet? No. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead and finish it. Okay, don't look at this part down here. Okay, don't look at my answer. You try and finish it up. It can get confusing. It really can. I'm going to give you one that looks like it would be easy, but for some reason, the way that it's laid out, it, it's harder than what these are. And I don't know. It's just confusing. Sometimes what students will do is they'll put, like, they'll go, oh, this is a two by two, this is a two by three, and they go, oh, I need. I need a 2 by 3, and what they'll do is they'll put blanks here to know that they need a number for each one of a 2 by 3. Okay, did you get it? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, the one time that it, like, seems weird, it's almost like the simpler it is, the harder it is. So, like, something like this, um... Let's say we have a two by three. And I'm gonna multiply it by a three by one. Okay, can that be done? Okay, this is a what? Two by three. This is a what? Three by one. Three by one. Do the center ones match? They do, okay? These two match. Because at first you're looking at it and you go, you can't do this. Yeah, you can. Okay? The resulting matrix is going to be a two by one. So that means I'm going to have those two numbers when everything's said and done. Okay, but it, it, it like baffles your brain. Okay? So what I'm going to do to do this is I'm going to go this times this. So I have a negative 2 plus, oh wait, let me just go ahead and do the answer. Um, negative 8, this times this, negative 8, plus this times this, which is a negative 10, plus a negative 7 times a negative 3. Okay, you with me? So now I've got three numbers to add. Yes, no, Reagan, you with me? Okay. Then I go down to the next thing. Okay, so I did this row by this column. I only have one column, guys, okay? So then I pop down to the next row, and I go 6 times negative 2, which is a negative 12, 3 times 15, or 3 times 5, which is 15, and then 5 times 3, which is another 15. Okay, to get my answer, all i got to do is add that. So I've got, this is going to give me a negative 31 plus negative 8, so this is a negative 39. This one is going to be 15 and 15 is 30, 30 plus negative 12, is a positive 18. That's my answer. I don't know why those are harder, but they just seem harder. Okay? But if the pattern sticks, 
row by column, row by column. But first check and make sure you can do the multiplication. Okay? Make sense? Okay, we're going to, now, when would you ever use this? Multiplication is big when it comes to uh, rotation on a coordinate plane. Okay, when you take like a triangle and you say rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise, there is actually a, a matrix that allows you to figure out what the resulting ordered pairs would be. The only other way to do it without a matrix is to use a protractor and measure the angle and then turn it and measure the angle and it gets really, really complicated. So you're going to learn, I don't, I don't think this year, but I think in geometry you're going to learn how to do it with a rotation matrix. Okay? Um, so it does have practical use to it. All right, we're moving forward. Let's see how much time is left on that. Oop, I have to restart in a second. Okay, we're going to talk about determinants again. Okay, now we've already done this once because we did Kramer's rule, right? So let's refresh my memory here about how you do a two by two matrix and find the determinant of it. What's a determinant? Do y'all remember that? Okay, it's going to give me one answer, right? It's a one answer that stands for this matrix. Now, if I have that, I just have the matrix. If I have that, I have a determinant. Okay, that the two just straight lines like that are telling me I need to find the determinant of this matrix. So remember, you go 3 times 2 is 6, minus negative 2 times 4 is a negative 8. So my answer is 14. Okay? Remember how to do that. Okay, that was the Kramer's rule. We've done it. Here's the thing. The way you find the determinant on a second order matrix, which is a 2 by 2, is not the same way that you find the determinant on a third order matrix. What do you think the dimensions of a third order matrix might be? If this is a second order matrix, three by, there, three by what? Three. three, by three. It's a three by three. In order to find the determinant, it has to be square. Okay? It can be a two by two. It can be a three by three. It can be a 25 by 25. Okay, but you have to have the same number of rows as what you have columns. Now, we've already learned the second order determinant. We're going to learn the third order determinant today. That's all we're going to do. We're not going to go on to a fourth order, which would be a 4 by 4, or a fifth order, which would be a 5 by 5. There's different ways to do that. As I just knocked my camera.